Hey, my name's Samuel Leeds, and in this video, I want to talk to you about the importance of EPC certificates. An EPC certificate is something that's often banded around. When you're on Right Move, you'll see a little rating next to where it says EPC, and some people are like, what on earth does this mean, and why is it really important? So this video is for you if you ever intend on buying and owning property to rent out or even to live in yourself. I've also got a little special bonus nugget at the end of the video, so stay tuned until the very end. All right, so what is an EPC certificate? It stands for Energy Performance Certificate. So it rates how energy efficient the house is. Now an EPC certificate is gonna be marked somewhere between A and G. A means fantastic. G means mm -mm -mm -mm, really bad. And typically you're gonna get around about a D or an E. Average houses are D and E. EPC certificates were introduced to England and Wales in 2007, August the 1st. And right now, as I'm doing this video, every buy-to-let residential house must have an EPC certificate and it must be no higher than an E. So if you're about to buy a house, before you buy it, check the EPC. If the EPC is more than E, do not buy the house or find out exactly why it's high and see if you can fix it simply. How do you fix it if you've got a really high EPC? It might just be a case of the boiler needs changing. Maybe the windows are not double glazed and it's causing the house to run not very efficiently at all. Maybe you need a secondary heating system or maybe it's just a case of you need to insulate some of the walls. So find out what the problem is. You wanna bring that EPC as low as possible, which is gonna mean that your tenants are gonna stay longer because they're not gonna be having to pay a fortune to run the house. And if it's a HMO property or you're paying the bills as the landlord, then of course you're extra incentivized to try and keep it as energy efficient as possible. Now you'll need a new EPC certificate every 10 years by law. It costs on average, depending on the house, about 100 pounds to get an energy surveyor to go in and do an EPT certificate, and you'll need to do that every 10 years. Now, not all buildings will need EPT certificates. If it's a certain type of commercial property, or if it's a building that's about to be knocked down, or an unsafe building, or a church, a place of worship, then it will not need an EPC certificate. But generally speaking, always check this before you buy any house. And I hope this video has been helpful. I did promise there'd be a little bonus piece of content at the end, and that is on a similar type of story, council tax band. Before you buy a house, also check the council tax band. That's gonna be anywhere between A and H. Again, same story. A means the council tax each month is gonna be really, really, really cheap and H means it's gonna be really, really, really expensive. Before you buy a house, even if you're not gonna be having to pay the council tax, you should still check it out because you wanna know what to be able to tell your tenant. Also, if your tenant moves out, you're responsible for paying the council tax bill while the property is unoccupied. Where I live, I think council tax is really high where I live, it's like an H or a G, it might be a G but that means I have to pay a fortune in council tax. So for my rental properties, I'll always try and make sure they're around about a D, a C, and you're doing really well. So hope that helps. I want you to run a successful property portfolio. I want it also to run as economically as possible. And obviously it has to be legal. So check these things before you buy a house. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button or smash the dislike button. I don't really care as long as you do something, but please, of course, don't forget to subscribe. Smash the subscribe button. Turn on the notification bells because I'm gonna be doing some really amazing videos over the coming days and weeks. Thanks so much, I'll see you next time.